welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from what we normally get into, but I'm so excited about it because I'm sharing my story with y'all in a way that I have literally never shared before. So here's the deal. I was invited by the Cayman Islands government. If you're new here, if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Alyssa Marie and I'm a Caymanian. I'm originally from the Cayman Islands and I just actually moved to Atlanta at the top of 2020. Um, so yes, born and raised, loud and proud, Caymanian, Caribbean girl, but currently located in Atlanta. But yeah, so the Cayman Islands government slid in them emails and invited me to come home and be a keynote speaker for their Cayman Youth Empowerment Symposium and mind blown. This is my first like speaking engagement. I was super nervous but also very very excited because it's for the youth of Cayman and it's just such a full circle moment for me to be able to share my story and share it first in Cayman with the youth in Cayman, because that's literally where I started. I was the Cayman youth a few years ago, you know what I mean? And so to come back and be able to share my story and tell them kind of how I got started along this whole entrepreneurship journey and where I'm at now and kind of encourage them. It's just such an honor to be able to share that and to be able to inspire them and connect with them in this way. And also it just feels really good to actually share my story in an in-depth way because my it wasn't like you know from day one i was like i want to be a content creator like literally my life was on a completely entirely different path than what you guys see me do today so i did get my speech fully professionally recorded for y'all and i figured i would share it with y'all as well so literally what you will hear is my entire story from about 12 years old when I was playing football, all the way up to now. So you're gonna know things that I went through, um, how I got here in the first place, how I became a content creator, and also learn a lot of like the hard life lessons that I've had to learn along the way as well. It's just, I don't know, I love it. I love it. I put my heart and soul into this speech and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Is anybody so, in here confused about the whole content creator thing, how it all works and how I got here in the first place? Yes, okay, okay. So good news, by the end of today, you guys will have a really, really good, clear idea of what I do, how it all works, and how I got here in the first place. So let's get it started. So for those who may not know me, my name is Alyssa Marie. I am a born and raised Caymanian and I am a social media content creator and influencer. So social media is my livelihood. Over the past five, almost six years, I have built this huge online community that I have a really special connection to. We're a community of natural hair girlies. We love all things to do with natural hair, but we also love fashion and beauty and dog mom things. So it's this connection that I have with my community of like-minded people that's extremely valuable to brands. So when I partner with a brand to share their products with my community, the brand is paying for access to a very specific community that already trust me and my product recommendation and therefore it makes them highly likely to go out and purchase those products. So in essence, it's modern day marketing and it is highly effective. So even though I can definitely stand here with you all tonight and say that this is absolutely my dream job and I wouldn't rather have this any other way, I can also say that this is not the plan and the dream that I'd originally had for my life. So this is me at around five years old in my St. Ignatius uniform. I know we have some St. Ignatius people in here, so big up. <laughs> um, so I went to Catholic school all my life, well, not all my life, but from kindergarten to high school, where I graduated in 2010. So back then, I was an absolute tomboy, as Mr. Bernie let you guys know. Around age 12, I was invited to join the Cayman Islands women's national team, and this right here was my dream. Football was absolute life for me. So this is actually one of my favorite memories of all time. This is where we made history in the CONCACAF round, and I scored this header to win us the game against Haiti. <laughs> Literally one of my all-time favorite memories. So you can clearly see football was the dream. That was my life's plan. 
Also, fun fact, around this time, even though Instagram and Facebook did exist, I was not allowed to have a profile. My mom did not allow me to set one up until I was 18, which is very ironic seeing what I do for a career today. <laughs> so, after, so after graduating high school in 2010, I did two years of boarding school in Georgia instead of the traditional sixth form here before university. So my aim there was to be scouted to play football in university and then in hopes to then go ahead and play football professionally afterwards. But at boarding school in 2012 and 2013, I tore my ACL twice and I ended up having to get two knee surgeries, which had me retire from playing football. So I really wanted to highlight this moment here because it was genuinely one of the hardest, darkest moments of my life because at this point, I kind of lost who I was as a person and I lost my entire plan for my future that I had. So it's interesting because even though this was the darkest moment of my life, looking back at that today, it's a little exciting to think about because this was the beginning of me truly finding myself outside of football. And so this was a really pivotal moment for me. So it was a really good thing that my parents had always encouraged me to stay on top of getting good grades in school even while I was playing football because at least I had that to now rely on. I ended up getting accepted to five out of the six universities that I'd applied to and in the end I decided to go to Stetson University in Florida. So throughout my four years at university is when I really had to sit with this new reality and really rediscover myself. So first I discovered Sephora, which really fueled my interest and an obsession, some might call it, into makeup and skincare. And I really spent that time also leaning into one of the only subjects that ever sparked a genuine interest in me in school, which was business, specifically marketing. So I really just spent that time having fun, working on myself, and finding a new passion that lit me up in the way football used to. So I graduated from university magna cum laude. I love to shout that out from the rooftops because I worked really hard for that. So that was in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that was 2016 and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in business administration and a minor in marketing. And that was the point when I then came back to Cayman and I started working full time with Walkers in their business development and marketing department. So you're probably wondering, okay, when and how did you actually start creating content? Well, it was around this time. And how did I start? I literally just started and I started in Cayman. So at the time, I was very, very passionate about product ingredients, and I really just wanted to share that with everybody. So a lot of my early content was centered around clean beauty products. And then it wasn't until around December 2017 where I really started to take content creation seriously. So I had relaxed hair all my life. I know some of you ladies out here must be able to relate to that. But this was back around the time when the curly girl movement really started getting popular. And I was getting really curious about what my natural hair actually looked like. So in December 2017, I ended up chopping all of my hair off. <laughs> and I shared the entire experience on my Instagram and YouTube. And this was really the moment where I really learned how deeply you can actually connect with people across the world going through a similar journey. So I received tons of questions and comments and it fueled me to keep going, to keep sharing my journey because I felt like I was actually making a true difference. So then around 2018, 2019, that's really when my platforms were growing very quickly and I started having brands reaching out to me, wanting to work with me on social media campaigns. And that blew me away. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, these brands like actually want to work with little old me. What? What's going on? <laughs> so um, fun fact, this picture, the campaign of me in the tub, that was actually, I remember it clearly. I actually filmed that after a full day at Walker's. Came home from work at around 6 p.m. I did a little makeup, got the products together, and then I called my mom and boy, they begged her. And I was like, please come over and help me take these photos. So I begged her and around 7, 8 p.m. we're taking these photos for this campaign. So that's basically what I did around this time. I juggled my passion and my content creation while also working full time at Walker's for as long as I possibly could. But then, of course, it came to a point where my content creation was demanding a lot more of my time. And then I started feeling like I had a decision to make. Do I actually quit my job and tried this thing out full time? 
And I did. So specifically, if there's anybody here who's thinking about trying something similar and figuring out how to make that change from working for someone else to then working for yourself, I really want to stress this. Make a plan. This was absolutely not an overnight decision for me. I did not wake up one day and decide, oh, okay, let me go ahead and quit my job. I actually made a plan. I spent a full year saving my money and slowly figuring out how I was going to make this all work. So what that looked like for me was investing in an apartment first, which I did live in for a little bit. That's the picture of me and my girl Hershey there on the couch. But I quickly decided that I wanted to actually move back home with my parents so that I can then rent it out and save a little bit of extra income there. And then during this time, I also just kept up with my content as best as I could. I went home on lunch breaks to film, edit content, post content. I stayed up late doing the same as well. And at the time, it, I was just absolutely passionate about it so it wasn't a chore for me I was just beyond excited and it just made me happy so part of my plan was not only to quit my job as well but to move to Atlanta as well because so as a content creator in Cayman one of the challenges I faced was having to pay money to receive products on island from brands who were looking to gift me these products for free it wasn't sustainable after a while, and then I also wanted to have special access to be able to connect more with my community, almost half of which is based in the US. So I worked really hard, saved the money for the, for the move, and also to be able to support myself for a while just in case things ended up starting out slow. I also do want to say a really special thank you to my parents because they literally never made me feel crazy, which I think is crazy looking back. The fact that I quit my job at 25 and was like, yeah, I'm going to move to Atlanta by myself. But they never made me feel crazy. They supported me every step of the way. And they just said, you know what? Go ahead and do it. And if you ever need to come back home, you can. So that was huge. So I did it. I resigned from Walkers in December of 2019, and I moved to Atlanta in January 2020. So literally right before the pandemic, which was crazy, but we made it. And ever since then, I do have to say that my career has absolutely flourished, especially with being able to focus on my content full time for the first time. So having never given up while battling fear and loneliness during the pandemic, I was handpicked for the Sephora squad in 2020 and 2021. I have been able to connect with my community and also other content creators, which has been absolutely life-changing for me. But as beautiful as this looks, I really want to take a moment to get real with y'all. Because while it's been a really beautiful journey to look back on, it definitely hasn't come without its challenges. It isn't all just cute and pretty. So here's a couple of huge life lessons that I've had to learn along the way. We have a total of three that I had to learn the hard way. So number one, comparing yourself to others will keep you stuck. This is something that I constantly battle from time to time because it is a human nature thing. I do think it's very natural to want to compare yourself to others but it can be so draining and literally keep you stuck. So what I try to do is become more mindful of when I'm falling into that trap of comparison and just remind myself to refocus back to me. So I like to call it honoring the season that you're in. I know that we don't have seasons in Cayman, but I like to think of it as everyone being in their own personal season. So for example, John might be in his hustle season, Sarah might be in her winning season where she's seeing rewards from all her hard work, while Alex might be in his testing season where it seems like his faith just keeps getting tested over and over again, and I know a lot of us have been there. Um, but what's important at the end of the day is to always put your energy towards you and, and towards honoring your season. Honor it, put your head down, focus on you, and one day you'll look up and you'll realize, oh my gosh, I'm doing it. So instead of you feeling down because your path doesn't look like somebody else's, you're gonna start to feel just proud of your own journey and where you are along with it. So that's the first thing. Number two, you're only as good as your relationship is with yourself. And I'm gonna repeat that for the people in the back. You're only as good as your relationship is with yourself. So you know that saying, people can only love you as much as you love yourself? I know, it's like cheesy, but I've really learned that it's actually true. And again, it's something that I'm personally working on every single day. So while you're out there honoring your season and putting that energy into focusing 
on honoring your season, you have to make sure that you also honor yourself. When we think of self-care, we think of the cute things like facials and spa days, but I'm not talking about the cute things, I'm talking about the hard things. Moving your body, maintaining an active lifestyle, eating less junk, more foods that actually fuel your body. These are things that will actually help you maintain your physical and mental health. And as an entrepreneur, your work and success is entirely dependent on you and your health. So the more you actually take care of yourself, the better you'll be at the work that you do. So do the hard things. The third and final thing that I've learned is to always remember your why. Why are you doing this in the first place? When you get everything that you prayed for, and this is the part where I'm really keeping it real with y'all. When you get everything that you've prayed for and your passion becomes your livelihood, your relationship with your passion is actually gonna change. And this is something I feel like no one likes to talk about out loud for some reason, but like I said, I'm here to keep it real with y'all. So we all know the saying, when you do what you love for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. It is not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> It, it's an absolute fairy tale. I love what I do. I really do, but it's not easy. There are many times when it feels like a job, because it is. It is work. It's fulfilling work, because I love what I do, but I don't want anyone falling for the fairy tale that you'll never work a day in your life, because you know what? As an entrepreneur, you're probably gonna work the most, the longest hard, you're probably gonna work the hardest and the longest hours than you ever have in your entire life. So, I also wanted to mention that failure along the way is inevitable because each time you learn something new, each time, sorry. So I also wanted to mention that failure along the way is inevitable, but each time you learn something and it'll take you one step closer to where you're meant to be. So most of the time also failure is subjective. So in my case, personally, I struggle with keeping my own content deadlines. And I'm not even talking about the brand campaign deadlines because those are always met. But when it comes to my own deadlines for my organic content that I wanna post, I do struggle with that. So what I do is try to just hold myself accountable while also giving myself grace. And really at the end of the day, it's gonna be your why that's gonna actually keep you going and inspire you to just keep working on your relationship with yourself. So for my entrepreneurs, everybody that raised their hands in the beginning of this, just raise your hands really quickly again. Yes, so if there's anything you take from today, let it be this. Move in silence, follow your passion, turn your blinders on, don't compare yourself to others, stay consistent, do quality work, and just keep going. You might fumble along the way a couple times, but one of the best pieces of advice I have ever gotten was to fail fast, because again, you learn so much every single time you do. I hope I can serve as an, an inspiration for you that the traditional career path is not the only way for you to be successful. And for my content creators, raise your hand again so I can see you. Okay, so I have some specific advice for y'all as well. I really believe what has made me successful over the years was prioritizing my education throughout the years, no matter what was going on. I really want to encourage you all to keep a hunger for learning. When it comes to your content as well, really tap into your authenticity and what makes you different and celebrate those differences. Stay consistent, keep creating quality content because you'll get better every time you create something. And last, but definitely not least, please prioritize your mental health. Your mental health should be put above all else. Take social media breaks when necessary, when you're feeling overwhelmed or just feeling like you need a break, take it. Seriously, it's a huge part of my routine and a big reason of why I'm able to keep going. And that was just not just for the content creators, it's for everybody else in here. Your mental health is everything, so protect it at all costs. Thank you guys so much for having me. I hope I was able to inspire at least one person in some way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. But before we wrap up, you know we gotta take a little selfie. Okay, so on three, if everyone can just say, came on, yes. All right, one, two, three, came on, yes. <laughs> I love it. Thank you all so much. What do y'all think? Oh my gosh, I just, uh, it's almost a little nervy and like it's, it's me being very vulnerable out here just 
putting my story and my first ever keynote speech on the internet, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any additional questions for me, let's get to chatting in the comments. Make sure you comment below and I will meet you there. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. We switched it up a little bit this week, but in the meantime, I will catch y'all right back here, same place. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out for another video next week.